Alright, hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to be going over a problem that pertains to utilizing the ideal gas law. The problem that we're going to be solving is as follows. The problem asks us, or tells us, a balloon is filled with helium that's initially at 27 degrees Celsius in one bar. The balloon is released and rises to in the atmosphere until the helium is at 17 degrees Celsius in 0.9 bar. The problem asks us to determine as a percent the change in volume of the helium from its initial volume. So to make things a little bit simpler, I've already gone ahead and listed all of our knowns. So we know actually quite a bit about both the uh, initial and the final state of our problem. <clears throat> we know our initial temperature, we know our initial pressure, and we also know the final state temperature and pressure. The temperatures we were given in Celsius, uh, we can easily convert those into our absolute temperature scale for the SI, which is uh, Kelvin. <laughs> by adding 273.15 to our Celsius temperature. And the pressures were given to us in terms of bar. And one bar is the equivalent of 100,000 Pascal. So we can go ahead and easily convert our uh, P1 and P2 pressures into Pascals to be able to utilize the ideal gas law. So I've gone ahead and listed all of our knowns. So we know T1, P1, T2, and P2. And in this problem, the only assumption that we're going to be making is that we're dealing with an ideal gas. So knowing all of this, let's go ahead and try and solving our problem. So step one. So going back to the problem statement itself, it asks us to determine as a percent the change in volume of helium from its initial volume. Now the best way to do this is that we want to look at the change in volume between our two states, so our initial and our final state, and we want to divide that by our initial state, which is V1. Now just note that I put a line through my uh, Vs if I'm denoting a volume, just because there's tons and tons of symbols and that just kind of makes things a little bit more, uh, a little bit easier to, to recognize. So our change in volume <coughs> is going to be our second state or our final volume minus our initial volume divided by our initial volume, V1. Now we can actually go ahead and rewrite this as V2 divided by V1 minus 1. So we can see that in order to find out this, this change in volume relative to the initial volume, the key is to solve for the ratio of V2 divided by V1. So let's go ahead and do that. So step number two. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the mass uh, ideal gas law, which is PV is equal to MRT. So we have pressure, volume, mass. R indicates the individual gas constant, which for our case is going to be the individual gas constant of helium, and T being temperature. Pressure and temperature should be in absolute scale, and volume should be in cubic meters. So let's go ahead and solve um, for our initial and final state uh, volumes. So we have P1, V1, is equal to MR, T1. Now we can rewrite this by solving for volume at state 1 as MR T1 divided by P1. Now one thing to note is that I did not put a subscript on our mass term. The reason being is the amount of mass that we have in our helium balloon is going to be unchanging. So if you think back to you know when you get to play with a helium balloon which is always really fun you have the balloon always closed off, otherwise the helium escapes and you know, you're no longer really able to have too much fun with it. So the, as a result of the tying of the ends of our balloon, the mass within our balloon is always going to be constant. And therefore we can go ahead and say that regardless of state, M is always going to be the same. So let's go ahead and also do this for our final state. So we get P2, V2 is equal to MR, T2, solving for our final state volume, <clears throat> we have V2 is equal to MR 
T2 divided by P2. So now we have V1 and V2. Now what if we were to go ahead and look at a ratio of V2 divided by V1 using the expressions that we just derived? So for step number three, we want to look at the ratio of V2 divided by V1. So what we end up getting is MR T2 divided by P2 all divided by MR T1 divided by P1. Now the mass and our individual con uh, and our individual gas constant remain constant throughout, and therefore we can go ahead and cancel those out in our expression. So our M and our R terms cancel out, which tells us that our ratio of V2 over V1 is just going to be a ratio of temperature and pressure. So what we end up getting is P1 divided by P2 times T2 divided by T1. So let's go ahead and plug in the temperature and pressure because we know everything. We know our initial and final state temperature and pressure. So we can just go ahead and plug in our um, values into our expression. And what we get is 100,000 Pascal divided by 90,000 Pascal times 290.15 Kelvin divided by 300.15 Kelvin. And this gives us 1.074. Now since the, um, by looking at this number, we can see that the ratio of V2 over V1 is greater than 1. So right off this bat, this tells us that the volume at our state 2 is actually larger than our initial state volume. So now that we know V2 divided by V1, we can go ahead and take the value that we've solved for in our step number 3, we can plug that back into the expression that we derived in step number one. So what we get is that the change in volume divided by our initial volume is equal to V2 divided by V1 minus 1, which is equal to 1.074 minus 1, which gives us 0.074. Now we can go ahead and multiply this number by 100 to convert it into a percentage, and this tells us that we have a positive increase in volume of 7.4% from the initial state. So our secondary state has a 7.4% increase in volume from our initial state in this problem. So uh, hopefully this was a very helpful video. Uh, if you have any questions regarding um, any of the assumptions we make or any of the steps in the problem, go ahead and leave them in the comment section. And I will do my best to respond to them, uh, respond to them as quickly as possible. Um, and yeah, I, I will. Um, hopefully you found this helpful, and I will see you next time.